Hi there, my name is David Stewart. I'm a researcher at the Materials Science Department here at the University of Maryland, and this video is all about the Thompson coil with the jumping rings. So we have here a power supply hooked up to a large inductive coil with many loops of wire inside of it. And on top of that is a um, iron core rod that simply transmits that magnetic field up to this region here, where we will actually place these rings. The rings are made of different materials, either brass or wood. Um, so if we place a ring on here, I'll put this piece of wood on top of the apparatus just to make sure it doesn't go too high. Uh, we'll see that it jumps. Of course, the question is, why does it jump? So we place a magnetic coil down here. That generates a magnetic field, uh, which wraps around this iron core up here. And that induces a magnetic field inside our rings. Now, the power of that magnetic field, the force on the ring, is going to depend on several different factors. For instance, if I take a ring which is a larger diameter than the first ring, do you think it'll jump higher, then jump less, or something else? So going back to the first small ring, jumps pretty far, almost two-thirds of the way up this wooden rod. I'm going to put the large ring on. Hardly goes half as high. And the reason for that difference is that because of their different diameter, they have a different amount of total resistance through them. So the ring with a smaller diameter has less resistance, and so it can establish a stronger current. And if it's got a stronger current, then it can have a higher magnetic field, and it can have more magnetic repulsion. And so it actually ends up with a larger force on it. Also, it's lighter, which helps. The larger diameter ring um, has the same magnetic field flowing through it, but it's a larger resistance. So ultimately, the total force on this ring is smaller, and it is also heavier. So if we take another, or th that's these two rings. If we take another uh, kind of material, like wood. Uh, wood is an insulator. Uh, but it has roughly the same, or we have a piece of wood here that has roughly the same diameter as our large ring. So what do we think happens then? We put the wood ring in here. Does it jump higher, lower? Doesn't jump at all. It actually doesn't jump at all. And the reason for that is that wood is an insulator. That means although it has a certain area and a certain amount of magnetic field traveling through it, it cannot set up a counteracting current around it. So since no current can flow through the wooden ring, it can't generate a counteracting magnetic field, and there is no net magnetic force on the insulator. Now the last part of this is, what happens if we take a conductor and we cool it down in a bath of liquid nitrogen? Now, the liquid nitrogen will cool the ring down to 77 Kelvin, approximately. And once the ring gets down to 77 Kelvin, um, it will actually increase its conductivity. So although it's the same material, at low temperatures, metals have a higher conductivity than at room temperature. So what do we think that'll do uh, to the height that it jumps to? If it has a higher conductivity, will it jump higher, lower, or not at all? Put that there. So that was the large diameter ring, which we saw before only jumped about this high up the rod. And in this case, it has jumped all the way off and rolled down the table. Now that's because the conductivity was increased, which means that the, uh, there is less resistance in the material. And so it can establish a stronger current. And if it's got a stronger current, then it can have a higher magnetic field and it can have more magnetic repulsion between the ring and the coil underneath the, or the apparatus. Thanks for watching. Liquid nitrogen is so good.